Uh, she's been called sweetie, honey, and probably many other terms of endearments from her husband, the House Minority Leader, and last week's Dim of the Week, Dim of the week which I did. The Bows, they've been married for 27 years. Um, Carol's been called mom by her four Eagle Scout sons, Stephen, Guyton, Asa, and Inman. Asa and Inman. All of whom are very proud of GA Bulldogs, I hope, even though we're having a rough season. Um, she took a break from her career to spend time with the boys because she understands how important supportive and involved parents are in their children's lives. She's been called employer by the 50 plus people that work with her at the Carrier Herald the Jan newspaper she owns and manages. Um, she's the only candidate in the race that understands the difficulties of making payroll in a tough economic situation. And she's been called a community leader by those in her church, where she teaches Sunday school, sits on the board, by the local chapter of the Boys and Girls Club, which she helped found, and the Georgia Citizens for the Arts, where she served as president. And while she and DeBose were both in the primaries, we called her Lady Porter because being asked, which Porter are you talking about, got a little tiring. But if you talk to Dems across the state, she's called a breath of fresh air. If you talk to the Republicans, she's called the only candidate that I can vote for on your side and um, one of the best candidates of any race. And while all of this may make you want to call Carol Superwoman, after November 2nd, we'll be calling her Lieutenant Governor. So give her more welcome. right now and um, yeah, yeah, you, you heard about my story I grew up in Wrightsville Georgia you may notice this accent there are about 2,000 people in our my hometown um, y'all may have heard of Herschel Walker he put us on the map he was a great Heisman Trophy winner from Georgia but uh, I went on house calls with my father over there and I went in every single home across all educational and economic backgrounds and I know that if the children that are there had had the same opportunities I had, I graduated from here too, with a psychology degree, that they would not be stuck in those terrible situations that a lot of them are in. Right now in Georgia, we're number one in the percentage of our population in the correctional system because we don't value education. And I realized at a very early age that education meant a big difference to most of the people in this state. I'm very upset about the fact that we say we're pro-business in Georgia when we are certainly not. We don't have reliable water. We don't have decent transportation. We're in the bottom of education. Like I said, we're number one in the percentage of our population in the correctional system. I don't want to get you depressed, but we're the 10, <laughs> top 10 most unhealthy states in America. None of that is going to grow an economy. And I just get so fed up as general manager when I look at my nine county area. I am sick and tired of seeing small business owners screwing plywood over their windows because of the poor, unethical decisions that are being made in Atlanta. There are a lot of great solutions for Georgia. We have the blue ribbon panels and commissions, but things never seem to get through. Come on in, DeVos. I want to introduce my husband, Buzz Porter. He's the minority leader of the house. <laughs> but there are a lot of reasons why, and a lot of it is corruption and manipulation of the voting process. Now, how many people in here are familiar with the Hawk system? Okay, that's a pretty high average, believe it or not. The Hawks in the Georgia House were these people appointed by Glenn Richardson, the speaker. And they were so arrogant, they even had hawks on their name badges. It's not like something they tried to hide. They had hawks on their name badges, and they called themselves hawks for their ability to swoop into committee and take prey. That's how arrogant they were. These hawks could go into any committee, not committees they were on, any committee, and without having read a word of the bill or heard one word of testimony, they could stack it with hawks until they could change the outcome of the vote. It absolutely did away with representative government in Georgia. And I had no hawks.com. I fought it as hard as I could. And when we got the new Speaker of the House, David Ralston, because Glenn Richardson had to resign, we killed the hawks, which was a great day in Georgia. And some of the other hawks have resigned. So I feel like we've cleared
cleaned up a lot of the house and we can do a lot of good over there, but we need to go across the hall to the Senate and clean up in the Lieutenant Governor's office because as we all witnessed this past session, he's using threats and coercion to manipulate the votes over there. Preston Smith was the Chairman of Judiciary and he had taken an oath to his constituents that he would not raise taxes. Well, Casey Cagle, the Lieutenant Governor, wanted him to raise taxes on sick people in the hospital on the bed tax. And Preston Smith said, I will not break my oath and you can take away my chairmanship and he resigned over it. But luckily for me, before he did, he went to the well of the Senate and told the whole ugly truth about how the system is being manipulated. It's very detailed. I have the transcript up on my website if you'd like to read it. But he went to the well of the house and called it distinctly un-American. And that's exactly what it is. It is un-American. And I will stop that as soon as I get to the Senate. And we have to do it to get the good things through. Now, what I want you to listen to always, when politicians are running, they talk about fiscal responsibility. Well, I think we can look at this state and tell we haven't been fiscally responsible in the last few years. And Casey Cagle, the incumbent lieutenant governor, repealed the homeowner's tax relief grant in a recession and gave us the single largest property tax increase in Georgia history in a recession. Not a good plan, not a good way to build the economy, and it's a back-end way to hurt our public education system. I never would have done that, and I think when we reach out for the independents that we need to bring into our race, now y'all are all on board, but we need to reach out and let others know who is actually raising their taxes in Georgia. It's not me. I didn't want to do it. I wouldn't have done it. It's Casey Cable. He also has raised fees and that sick tax. So it's just over and over he's gone against his base. And when you do that, you can be beat. Um, smaller government. Smaller government is great if it's efficiency you're creating. If it's getting rid of waste. If it's getting rid of the feathering of nests of friends and turf protection. You can collapse programs if they're not meeting our goals. But what they did when they chose to furlough teachers and state employees, that's not going to grow the economy. We 